So how do we connect with Jesus? How do we actually become a child of God? Um, it, I was asked that question just, I've just been up in York uh, speaking at the Christian Union there. And on the way down, driving back from York to Oxford, um, my wife was expecting me about midnight. She was already going to be in bed. I didn't get past, didn't get home way past midnight because I called in to get some petrol. And um, I thought it was just going to be five minutes getting this petrol. I was about an hour in this petrol station. I went in, there were these two ladies behind the counter. And I was wearing, as it happens, my clerical collar. I sometimes wear it. It's great for evangelism, wearing a dog collar, clerical collar. And uh, I told this lady I'd been up speaking in York. And it's really odd, this doesn't happen, hardly happened at all. As I was speaking, one of these ladies began to cry. And she said, I don't know why this is happening. This doesn't normally happen. And she went to the back room because she was crying. So I talked to the other lady who said, oh, normally I'm bored by religious people. But she said, you're interesting. And I said, okay, fair enough. And, um, and then they, they asked me questions. She came back, the other lady came back. They asked me question after question. And I talked about, obviously I talked about the presence of God and how in prayer, I you know, sometimes sense the presence of God. My eyes fill with tears. And she said, how come I've never experienced the presence of God? And I said, have you given your life to Christ? She said, no. Uh, and I said, look, would you, like, would you like to? And she said, yes. So I said to the other lady, would you like in on this? And she said, yes. So I, I prayed for them both there and then. They were behind the counter, this COVID perspex glass screen. Uh, but God, God, that's no barrier for the Lord. And they both gave their, they both gave their lives uh, to Christ. They both so received Christ. They both received, they both received Christ. So you and they explained were a little about that. Well, I was there for an hour. I was there for an hour. So I, sh I shared the gospel using my testimony and John 3.16, as it happens on that occasion. And what happened? And, uh, and they, both, they both wanted to uh, give their lives, give, give their lives to the Lord. And they were touched. They were touched by the Holy Spirit. I always pray that, that people will be touched tangibly by the presence of presence of God. But Tom Wright, who's a, a colleague of mine, has been a colleague of mine at Wycliffe, he says that repentance and faith is the light motif of the gospel, very Tom Wright type phrase. But he's right. In other words, the distilled essence of the gospel is turning from and turning to. So that's what I did. I'm not into easy believism. Sometimes you get people say, just lean into God or just, well, yeah, fine, lean into God. But it's repentance and faith. We need to turn away from sin, that which is wrong. Uh, homotia, the Greek word, that which falls short of God's standards, which is perfection. And we need to put our faith in and upon the person of Jesus Christ and his atoning death on the cross, of course. And, um, and so that's what I did. I led these ladies to, to turn from their sins uh, and to trust Jesus Christ as the, the hope uh, of the world, their hope, their personal hope. And, uh, and they, were, they were touched by him. And they experienced the presence they of the did. Lord. They did. They experienced the presence there and then in the motorway service, in the, the, the petrol station on the motorway, halfway between Oxford and York uh, on a Friday night. I really hope that you have enjoyed this interview. Can I encourage you to hit subscribe so that you can get more of these interviews in the future?